In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at a 40 inch CFL Skepture branded TV. This same set looks like it's also rebranded as ProScan, RCA, or Curtis. But, anyways, what happens when we push the power button? <clears throat> we'll get a red light in the bottom corner, but then nothing else happens. It just kind of locks up. Uh, so, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, check out the power supply, make sure all its power rails are working. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top. Uh, we have a 24 volt, and there we go, a 23.78. That's close enough to 24. Uh, another 24 volt down here. I believe this is for the audio amp, probably on the same rail. Yeah, 23.78, close enough to 24. Uh, we have a 12 volt supply right here, 11.79. That's good, and a 5 volt rail down here. She's at 5.02. That's good also. All right, so uh, all the power rails are fine. Uh, next, I'm going to take a closer look at the backlight and inverter boards. Now the inverter board, the pinout, is labeled right here in this chart. The second wire down from the top is the turn-on signal, and that goes to the main board here to the top uh, wire pin. I'm just going to try to back pin that with my meter. My meter right now is just set on current just so it's passing through just so I can use it for poking into wires. I'm going to try to get to the 5 volt there if I can get my... Yep, I almost got it. Okay, so if you see through these holes here, you can see the backlight came on and it's on, you know, top and bottom. Uh, so we just take a look at the screen here. Yeah, you're really not going to see anything because the LCD screen's black. But anyways, this tells me that the inverter boards are fine, and it tells me the backlights are fine because uh, I'm able to, you know, turn it on and off. Um, so that leads uh, to the main board being the issue. There's there's no image, and it's basically brain dead. But we know the power supply is fine. We know the inverter board's fine. We know the backlight's fine. Uh, so I'm going to do a little looking into the main board. So I've ran into a bit of a snag with this main board. Uh, it is definitely acting like it has an EEPROM issue. And Shop Jimmy has tons of EEPROMs uh, for this main board. But the only problem is none of them are for this A12092068 number. They have tons of others, but not for this. But they do have a complete, I should say they did have a complete main board. Uh, that matched the A12092068 number. Uh, they didn't have the EEPROM, but they had the whole full board. So uh, first what I did is I emailed Shop Jimmy and said, hey, <clears throat> I, can you can you sell me uh, the EEPROM for this particular main board, or could you at least sell me the, the bin file for this particular main board? And they said, uh, thanks for checking, but unfortunately we do not carry the EEPROM for your main board. Sorry. So what I did is I bought the full main board which is right here and here it is now the suspicious conspiracy theory going on is the eprom has been reworked so somebody put a new eprom in it and i'm assuming it was shop jimmy here i'll show you under the microscope uh the rework that i found So as you can tell, somebody put an EEPROM in this board with that number. Um, anyways, but it's okay because I have an idea. Uh, I'm going to try to use my X100 tool uh, to, I'm going to pull off the Shop Jimmy EEPROM and make a copy of it. And uh, let's see if we can make that work. I haven't used my X100 for this style of EEPROM, so I'm not sure if it's going to work. Package size was a little bit wider than what these pads allowed, so I had to run some jumpers. 
But uh, I'm going to try to get this to read. It's 25.32. Not sure if that's a good sign or not. It's kind of taking a while. Huh, success, it actually worked. Sweet. All right, let's give this thing a file name. Uh, we will name it the part number on the back here. Okay, save success. Yay! Here I've placed the failed EEPROM in the programmer and I'm saving the working file onto it. So here I just got done installing the original failed made board with the original failed EEPROM with the dump from the Shop Jimmy board. Here's a Shop Jimmy board, uh, and there's a Shop Jimmy EEPROM. So I, I dumped the copy of that onto the old bad failed EEPROM, and look at this. It actually works. I wasn't expecting the the corrupted EEPROM to uh, take a, a clean file and, and work, but oh, it did. Well, this repair is pretty much wrapped up. The Shop Jimmy main board is all put back together. Original, uh, their EEPROM is back on it, all cleaned up, tested, and it works. Original board is in the TV with its original EEPROM, and it's working good. Uh, I'm actually going to email Shop Jimmy uh, the bin file and also if you need the bin file for this particular model you gotta remember it has to be the a a one two zero whatever whatever it'll all be down in the description if you need the bin file i'll email it to you otherwise if i can find like a file sharing or hosting of some kind i'll see if i can make that uh bin file available to other people that need it too but uh gosh i think that wraps up this video all right thanks for watching